Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise us to the Most High, Yah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praises to the Almighty God, the Most High, Yah. I thank him for another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Apostle Curtis Lewis. I'm compelled by the Spirit to come on and do part two of a lesson that I started the other day that was entitled Contending for the Faith Once Delivered to the Saints, uh, part two. Uh, I want to say in advance that my wife is in her office and she's doing a class because my wife teach voice, she teach piano, uh, she almost, uh, she also speak two different languages. Um, she's a theater uh, teacher, and so she's a very gifted woman. And uh, like I said, she's about to end her class, and um, and I'm getting ready to start mine. So if you hear um, a little noise in the background. It'll be my wife and her class teaching, but she's about to end. So the reason I'm going on now is because I like to allow the spirit to move me to do what I do. Amen. I don't just like to move on my own. I don't like to just get on social media just because I like being seen or being heard. I just follow the spirit of the most high. Yah. The Bible said they that are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. So everything I do, I try to allow the spirit to lead me. So I follow his prompting. I follow his inward voice that I hear. I follow the lead of the spirit. And then when he confirmed things in prayer and in the word, then, then I act upon it. So I'm here again today, um, getting ready to try to finish up the lesson that I started when my wife and I came back off the cruise, we did our, uh, our anniversary cruise. And so when I got back and I started this lesson, um, I kind of went an hour or so and I felt like it was uh, time to end it. And I'm going to try not to be long tonight. If I go a little bit over an hour, I want to encourage those that's logging on. You can always come back and watch it. Or if you can bear with me, um, hang in there. I want to greet everyone in the chat uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. I want to say hi to everyone. It's so good to see all of you again. Um, keep in mind, once I get started teaching in the lesson, I try to focus on the lesson. Um, but if there's any questions or comments, you can leave them in the chat or leave them on Facebook, either or. And I, even if there's some disagreements, I don't mind the disagreements, but I would ask that if there's something someone maybe disagree upon, when I go off on YouTube, then please go to the comments and put your disagreement in so I can converse back with you. Because while I'm teaching the lesson, I'm not so focused on the chat so I can't converse back and forth with you. So that's why I do it like that. Um, maybe there are some times I'll come on and then I'll focus on the chat, but you know, this is just kind of the way the most high lead me to just focus on the message. But I do want to greet everyone again for joining me this evening. And I'm going to try to get, go straight into the lesson. And I hope and pray that it's a blessing to your life and to your family and to this great awakening. Let's go to the Father. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you with thanksgiving. We bless your holy name. Thank you for our health and our strength. I thank you for those that are joining me on YouTube in the chat. Thank you for those on Facebook. I pray your blessings be upon them. I pray that you would open their eyes of their understanding, that they may see and behold wonderful things out of your law. I pray that their families are healthy and whatever is wrong, that you would fix it for them. Heal their hearts and heal their families and bless them. As the word go forth, you sent your word and you heal your people. We give you praise in Jesus name. Amen and amen. 
Okay, so let's go to the Word of God. Uh, and again, I want to give the Father all the praise uh, and His Son, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. And we're going to get started. Let's go to Jude chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And, you know, of course, Jude is only one chapter. So I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads as follows. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Now notice, uh, Jude starts his letter out and he acknowledges three people, himself, uh, his brother James, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is a family, and this whole family are Hebrew Israelites. So he's writing this letter, acknowledge himself, acknowledge his brother James, and acknowledge the Lord Jesus, who he's now serving. But we know that these brothers was a half-brother of Yeshua. So these are Israelites. And so Jude here is writing in what we call the New Testament letter. But in this New Testament letter, he's talking to other Israelites. OK, so and the reason I like to bring that out is because in Western Eurocentric Christianity, they have taken this document for many, many years and they have taught this document void of the influence of Israelites, void of Hebrew Israelites. It's kind of like they just took a document, made it their own, and they preach and teach it apart from the Hebrew Israelites. So now that I'm coming, teaching it now, I'm teaching it from the perspective of the Hebrew Israelites. It is not my desire to leave anybody out like they left us out, but it is my desire and my passion to bring this book back to its right perspective. This is a Hebrew book, a Hebrew-oriented book, and he's talking to a Hebrew Israelite family. And the reason I want to emphasize that is because we know that there is a great uh, worldwide movement called this Hebrew Israelite Awakening. This movement have created all kinds of the, uh, feelings and emotions and thoughts and some of the people in, like I said, Western Eurocentric Christianity, they literally going nuts, trying to talk it down, trying to hate on it. And some of the brothers out here that are called urban apologists, who is nothing but black men and women trying to teach the word of God from a European perspective. And they don't realize that they are literally teaching the oppressor's doctrine. But, but some of those guys really, really try to come against this Hebrew Israelite awakening. But the Bible says that you'll find yourself fighting against God. And that's exactly what many of them are doing. They're fighting against God. Why? Because it's not going to stop. It's going to intensify. It's going to become greater. A lot of the ministers who was once in these denominational circles going to start waking up. A lot of them are already waking up all over the world. I know uh, quite a few of them. Probably not enough of them are waking up. But I believe before it's over, some of these mainline ministers' eyes are going to come open. And this thing is not going to stop. Glory to God. It's only going to intensify because this is what the prophets prophesied about. All the prophets prophesied about this end time. Uh, restitution of all things to the Israelites. And the first thing that he's restoring is our sight because we was once blinded. Many of us didn't even know we was the descendants of the Israelites of the Holy Scriptures because we was, uh, our ancestors and our people was taken into slavery uh, in, in, in every nation on the planet in the transatlantic slave trade. And we were scattered everywhere we lost our heritage. We uh, lost our language, lost our land, lost our name. And then they told us we was uh, this and that, gave us all kinds of by names. But, they, but little did they know that the scripture prophesied an awakening. The scripture prophesied a revival. The scripture prophesied that in the last days, the Most High was going to turn back to his people. And he was going to open their eyes and take the blindness off. And so that's what 
the whole world is experiencing, and they think they're fighting against men um, or a move of, of a man. But what, what happened is they, they, they're going to find themselves fighting against the Almighty God. And I've heard a saying that your hands are too short to box with God. But let me keep going. But I want to make that point about Jude, uh, that this is a Hebrew Israelite family, and he's writing to Hebrew Israelite people. I'm not saying that this book can't bless others. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying let's put everything in perspective. So it says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. He's talking to the Israelite family. That's who he's writing to. Then he said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you, <coughs> excuse me, that you should earnestly contend for the faith, not just faith, the faith. Glory to God. Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That was a faith which was inclusive of God's judgments, statutes, and his righteous law. And that was Israel's heritage. Glory to God. He delivered that to them. He called them out of Egypt, brought them to Mount Sinai. There made a covenant with them. And he delivered. He came down on the mountain and he spoke with a voice of words, the Bible say, and the whole nation of Israel heard his voice. They heard exactly what he said. And then he wrote it on two tables of stones, delivered it to Moses and Moses delivered it to the uh, house of Israel. So this is what Jude is talking about. Jude is not over in what we call the New Testament, talking to another people. He's talking to the same people that at one time uh, had this faith delivered unto them. That's who he's talking to. Glory to God. And we can't make no mistake about that. So he said, uh, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. And if you keep reading, he tell you why. Because ungodly men was going to creep in among the saints who were the Israelites and going to try to twist things, twist the scriptures and turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. And that's exactly what happened, especially when the Gentiles began to come into the church and when the heathens came in. Some of them, some of them came in and I believe some of them meant well and some of them uh, were born again and came into the family. But many of them, for the most part, had an agenda. And we, we can look down through history and see how when they got this document, this document rather, they whitewashed it. They perverted it. They watered it down. So this is what Jude is uh, writing about, talking to the Hebrew Israelites, uh, the ones that was given this charge by the Almighty and telling them to protect it, to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And in this great end time Hebrew Israelite awakening, we are charged to protect this gospel, to challenge things and to challenge the, the, the status quo. And so that's what I, I mean. That's just my particular anointing and calling. And I've been in a lot of these different circles and a lot of these different denominations. And before the father woke me up, he had me on a journey just learning all of these particular denominations, how they got started and what they teach and what they're talking about and what perspective they're teaching from. And so I understand a lot about them, but he woke me up and brought me out that I may be able to minister to this setting. And so that's why I talk about it a lot. You hear me talk uh, a lot, uh, bring up a lot, the urban apologists, not because I hate them, but because I hate the doctrine that they teach because it's nothing but a perverted lie that have deviated from the faith that was once delivered to the Hebrew Israelites. Glory to God. So, all right, the subject is contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. This is part two. Okay, now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make a 
comment that I made on uh, part one, and it's this. Uh, hallelujah. I humbly admit without any apologies that I am a part of this great Hebrew Israelite awakening. And I'm glad the Most High Father did not leave me out. Now, the reason I feel it's necessary for me to say that often is because I came out of a circle of a lot of ministers. A lot of them still know me. I have some uh, sons in the ministry that's still in that circle, white and black. I was talking to one today, one of the European brothers that uh, years ago I got saved and got in filled with the spirit and licensed and ordained them. And he's pastoring now. So I was talking to him earlier today and I stay on him about the truth, not hammering or trying to condemn him, but I stay on him about the truth and about this awakening. And so I brought that up because, like I said, a lot of the ministers that I won to Christ still in the ministry and still preaching in that circle. And then there's a lot of them that I know that was in it, some of them before I was in it and some of them came in it after me and I have relationships with many of them. So a lot of them know me. So whenever I start teaching about this Hebrew Israelite wake, awakening, I always want to make it absolutely clear where I stand. They know what I'm teaching. Many of them check in on me from time to time. Some of them think I'm kind of over on the deep end. That's fine. I don't, it, it doesn't matter to me. I am on the deep end. I'm deep in with the most high God. And his word, and I believe every word in the scriptures. But the reason I'm saying all of this is because I want them to hear me state this, and I'm gonna state it again. I humbly admit, without any apologies, I make no apologies, that I am a part of this great Hebrew Israelite awakening, and I'm glad the Most High did not leave me out. I'm glad he woke me up. And many of these ministers need to seek the most high so he can wake you up too. Glory to God. So I need to say that. I said it on part one. I want to say it on part two. Let me move on. If you hate the Hebrew Israelites, then you are showing your true colors as a result of what you are hearing and seeing with the Hebrew Israelites. So maybe you are not really ready to live in the Hebrew Israelite kingdom that's coming. Now, let me try to break that down. You know, I know there's a lot of things that's going on in this Hebrew Israelite awakening and uh, some of the stuff I don't even agree with. Some of the doctrines that I hear, I don't agree with. And the reason I don't agree with it is because I can see uh, some of the teaching violates of the scripture. And one thing I do know that no scripture contradict itself. Everything's supposed to be line up on line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So if you teach a doctrine or if I teach a doctrine and it violates other things in the scripture, then I know that doctrine is not true. So yes, I admit that in this awakening, there are some things that are not completely biblical and there are some characteristics in this Hebrew Israelite, uh, Israelite awakening, that's not good. I don't believe in getting on the street, cussing people out. I don't believe in mistreating people. I don't believe in talking down to people. But on the other hand, I always say that I understand why many of them are doing it. Now you won't see me doing it, but I understand why many of them are doing it because the father had to deal with me and show me that this nation and other nations, uh, took our people into slavery, mistreated them, hated them, cussed them out, uh, took them, uh, slayed them and didn't pay them and still haven't, you know, uh, uh, made everything right. And so a lot of these people are waking up now and they literally coming at the world and coming at many of the Western Eurocentric ministers in a way that's real, real strong. But here's what the father showed me that, the law of sowing and reaping is still in place. The Bible said, be not the seed. God is not marked. Whatever a man sowed, that shall he also reap. So if this nation and the Europeans in this nation and all these other nations took our peoples into slavery, mistreated us, fed us to alligators and, 
They gave us by names and still hate us, kill us in the streets. So how in the world you want them to wake up, realize who they are and talk sweet to you? It just don't work that way. And so the father had to show me that. Now, I'm not sitting here uh, saying this because I agree with anything that's wrong. And like I said, you won't see me doing it because I know that that's not the, the approach that Christ would take. Glory to God. Now, he'd whoop them out the temple, but I don't think some things I hear he would say. And I don't think some of the doctrines that I hear he would teach. That's what I'm saying. But having said all of that, no matter what's going on in this Hebrew Israelite awakening, the father still got it in control. This is his business. And he's got a plan for his people, even the one that camps on the street. Those are his people. They are my people. And I love them. Glory to God. And I understand them. And I'm standing with them. Glory to God. And that's why I say I am not ashamed to be a part of this Hebrew Israelite awakening. I say it without any apologies because I know the most high is in control of everything. So now I want to say this one more time. If you hate the Hebrew Israelites, this is for those out there that, you know, putting their mouth on this uh, movement, putting their mouth on God's people, because the Bible said, I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. If in fact, we are those people, those Hebrew Israelites, descendants of those people of the Bible, and you put your mouth on us and you put your mouth on these camps, you are literally putting your mouth on yourself because he said, as much as you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, by the womb, his bloodline, his chosen people, you have done it unto me. Now, I know a lot of people don't believe that we are the people. That's fine. Go find the people because whoever the people are, you're supposed to be loving them and praying for them. The Bible said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Now, if you go find you another people and you support them and you find out in the end that they were not the people, then we indeed were the people, then you're in trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of these urban apologists and a lot of these Eurocentric Christians, they are literally in trouble and don't know it. And that's why messages like this have to be taught and explained to give them an opportunity to reconsider a lot of things that they have said and a lot of things that they have doing that they have been doing. Because the father got it in control. He got a people waking up in all the nations of the world, black people, Negroes, realizing we are the people of the Bible. We fit all the scriptures. And this is not a joke. I mean, we fit everything in the book. Glory to God. Now, some of us coming out of situations where we've been broken, we've been abused, we've been misused, and we're coming back. Many of us are still a broken people. But the church world don't have the patience and the love of Christ uh, in them to be patient with God's people as he bring a healing to them. But instead, they put their mouth upon the move of God. And God fixed it that way. Why? Because he will let the negative come out in many cases first to reveal your heart, to show you your reaction. So the world is being put on trial now as the people of God wake up and take their places and come back to the heritage that we once had. Glory to God, according to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse one, down to verse five, we waking up in all the nations. And like I said, some of us waking up and we're whole. Glory to God. We've been made whole. We've been filled with the spirit. We've been uh, 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 tampered by the power of Christ. The Bible said that it said we sh you should make a uh, full proof of your ministry. It says to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you'll never fall. What things? Add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Some of us have acquired that even in Babylon. Glory to God. So not all of us are bitter. Not all of us are angry. Uh, the Bible said, be angry and sin not. Of course, we are righteously angry at how the nations did us and never made it right. And even now we're telling them for, uh, who we are, they still don't want to make it right. So yeah, there is a righteous anger that you can have where you're not sinning. The Bible said, be angry, but don't sin. But I'm saying some of them, are still broken and still hurting. So they may be reacting. So I want to encourage the church world to look at this thing closely because you may be 
uh, putting your own eternal destiny at stake. Because in Matthew chapter 25, the Bible said when Christ returned, sent his angels to gather his elect, that's Israel, from the four corners, which Judah went to fathers. They were scattered to the four corners of the earth. So when he come in the sky, he's going to send his angels to gather together his elect. Then he's going to set his kingdom up on the earth. And then the Bible said once he set his kingdom up in Matthew chapter 25, he's going to have multitude of peoples out of the nations on his right hand that he called the sheep. That those are people that loved the Messiah, accepted the Messiah, and loved his people. Okay, but he's going to have a multitude of peoples on his left hands out of the nation, and he's going to judge these people. Now, he's already set his kingdom up with the Hebrew Israelites. He done already retrieved them, and he done set them in the kingdom after he's taken them through the wilderness, plead with them face to face, get the rebels from among us, take them back into their land, all 12 tribes at the same time. Glory to God. Then he's set on his throne, and he's going to judge the nations of the world. And he's going to say to the ones on his right, come ye blessed of my father, enter into the kingdom prepared uh, for you before the foundations of the world. So others are going to enter this kingdom, but then there's many going to be cursed to not enter this kingdom according to Matthew 25. And he's going to tell them, here's what he's going to tell them. As you done what you did to these, the ones that he set the kingdom up with, which are the Hebrew Israelites, what you did to these, you did to me. And he's going to tell them, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. What is that? The scripture being fulfilled. I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse them that curse thee. Now, let me share this. Most of the church world, especially Western Eurocentric Christianity and the evangelical churches and many of the black churches, too. Most of them think the people, the chosen people are the ones over there in the Middle East. And I suggest you do some research. I suggest you look at this Bible so you won't be tricked and fooled any longer. But if you choose to think that those are the true people, like I said, bless them then. But if you wake up one day and find out they're not the people, you in trouble. But one thing for sure, the Father has made it possible for someone to get on social media and at least give you a chance to reconsider. And that's what I'm doing. Okay. Now, I made the statement that... Uh, if people hate this Hebrew Israelite awakening and begin to hate God's people because of some of the good things among us and some of the bad things among us, you may be proven that you're not ready to live in this coming kingdom. I'm going to show you why. Okay, Revelation 21, verse 10, and I read this on part one, and I'm going to read it again, then I'm going to jump to part two, uh, the rest of part two. In Revelation 21, start at verse 10, listen to what the Bible says, because this is just by the fact that this awakening has caught so much attention, why is it that the father getting everybody attention? Because he's giving you a chance to make some decisions. Because some of y'all don't know what's going on and you're putting your mouth on something that, that, that the most high is doing and you literally sealing your own doom with your own mouth. Your mouth, your tongue sets on fire the course of nature. And so, uh, and then Jesus said, every idle word that man shall speak, he shall give account of it in the day of judgment. So you're going to meet these words again. So if I was you, I'd make them real sweet. All right. Revelation 21 verse 10, watch this. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the, that great city, the holy Jerusalem. That's the new king. That's the kingdom that the uh, father going to set up. Uh, by way of Yeshua, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Look at the next verse. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates Listen closely now. Had 12 gates to this beautiful city, this kingdom of God. Had 12 gates. And the gates, 12 angels standing at the gate. Can't nobody get in there haphazardly. The Bible said, there shall nothing enter their end that defile it. I don't know where these people come from thinking they can't stop sinning and think they're going to enter this kingdom, but that's a whole nother message. But it says, 12 gates. 
and the gates, 12 angels. Now watch this. And the names thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. This is not some spiritual Israel either. Although these people are spiritual because they've been born of his spirit, they have received Messiah. But this is, this is the foundation of this new Jerusalem. It's going to be built with the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, that's the same people in the Old Testament that he met at Mount Sinai. Same people that was on the, uh, uh, at, in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Same people Jude is writing his letter to. These are Hebrew Israelites, and this kingdom to come is going to be built with the 12 tribes of the children of Israel and Israel's descendant, period. It's going to be set up like that first. So here's what I'm going to say again to the Western world, to the denominations, to everybody that's observing this Hebrew Israelite awakening of all these Negroes waking up, realizing we are the people of the book. And some of y'all got the audacity to get upset when we say we're the people of the book. Well, it's true. Glory to God. But your reaction to all of this is revealing maybe you're really not ready to live in this Israelite kingdom. This is a Hebrew Israelite kingdom, period. And so your reaction is going to wind up putting you out of the kingdom. Because if you can't love God's people where they are, even if they're broken, then you can't love him when he make them whole because he's testing your heart right now. How you going to react to them? And the Bible said, again, I'm going to bless them that bless you, curse them that curse you. Bible said, pray for them. Glory to God. The Bible says in Hebrew, uh, I'm sorry, in Romans chapter 11, boast not against them, but yet most of them, most people boasting and running their mouth and speaking off and not understanding. So that's why the father will allow someone to try to teach, break it down, make it plain, to give you an opportunity to stop sealing your doom. Glory to God. Okay, now, there's a lot of other verses I could go to, but that'll take me too far there. And I want to jump uh, to the latter part of this message. I don't know how long I've been going, but I'm conscious of my time. I want to kind of finish this up tonight at the most high help me. Now, here's a few statements, and I call it my statement breakdown. I'm going to make a few statements. I got three statements I want to make. Then I want to go through some scriptures to validate those statements because I'm not just up here teaching or, or sharing something out of my intellect or something somebody told me. No, I'm telling, I'm, I'm going to tell you what the scriptures say. Line up on line, two or three witnesses, the scripture interpreting itself. We do not need anyone to interpret the scripture. The scripture interprets itself. Glory to God. Bible said no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. We don't need no minister, no denomination, no man, no teacher. All you need is the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. All you need is the Holy Scriptures. And the Bible said, give yourself to reading. And if you just read, the Bible said that he'll give you the spirit of truth, which will guide you into all truth. Glory to God. And so that's a whole nother lesson too. So let me get to the statements. Number one, in this lesson, I want to show that it was the Hebrew Israelites that was called the saints. So when Jude said, made this statement in the book of Jude, uh, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to uh, write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Jude is talking about when this when this, this truth, when the, the laws of God, the statutes of God was delivered to a people. So Jude is making reference to the Israelite, the Hebrew Israelites of old. These are the people he's talking about because they was charged with the things of God. Let me just read a verse here and I might quote another one. The Bible says in Romans chapter three, it says, what advantage then had the Jew? All the Israelites, because the Jew is an Israelite. What advantage has the Jew? Watch this. Much in every way, because unto them was committed the oracles of God. Amen. It was committed to them. It was not committed to the Europeans. It was not committed to the Catholic Church. These oracles was not committed to Martin Luther, who started the Protestant churches. And it surely was not delivered to the Nicene Council. 
I don't believe, according to scripture, that should have ever been a Nicene Council because the, the scriptures condemn it. Glory to God. The Nicene Council was just a bunch of the Japhites or the Europeans coming in, taking over, colonizing land, taking people heritage and owning it up themselves and whitewashing it. That's really what it was. We're not saying that because I'm sitting here hating on anybody. I'm sitting here telling the truth and a uh, simple a simple study of history will show you that this is true. Glory to God. So there's another verse that said unto the Israelites was committed the adoption, the covenants, the promises, the service of God. All of this was committed to the Hebrew Israelites. And then when you search the scriptures, Old and New Testament, Jeremiah 31, you can look at uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 10. And you won't find a covenant made with nobody but Judah and the house of Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Everyone else that's going to enter into this covenant going to enter into a covenant that was made with the Hebrew Israelites. So if you hate the Hebrew Israelite and this Hebrew Israelite awakening is getting under your skin, maybe the father revealing to you, you're not ready for this kingdom over here in Revelation well, the Bible says there's 12 gates to the city, 12 angels standing by the gates, and the, and the kingdom is made up of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So maybe you don't like Israel. Maybe you think you do. Maybe you think you want to live in the kingdom. But the father's putting the whole world uh, on, 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 on the spot, and he's allowing your heart to be revealed. Because he, you know, if he want to bring a reaction out of you, why would he show you something positive first? He'll show you something negative to show you how negative you can be. And that's exactly what's happening to a lot of people. So that's why I say a lot of people who think they own the way to the kingdom may not be on the way to the kingdom because it's a Hebrew Israelite kingdom structured around the 12 tribes of the children of Israel <laughs> to, to glory to the most high. Yah. So maybe you don't want to go and you just you think you're going, but you're not. OK, let me keep going. I want to make this point. Watch this. Uh, Psalms of 147 and verse 19. Hallelujah. And again, I want to thank everyone for logging in on YouTube and on Facebook. I try to focus on the lesson when I'm going so I don't, you know, look at the chat and get distracted so much. But I do appreciate everybody on YouTube and on Facebook. Hallelujah. So Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. Watch this. He showeth his word unto Jacob. This is not spiritual Jacob. This is a natural person who was called Jacob. Glory to God. Jacob who wrestled with the angel and then had his name changed from Jacob to Israel. This was a person. Because see, the reason I say that, because over in this New Testament, you have the urban apologists. They try to spiritualize everything as if God made all of these promises to a natural people. But over in the New Testament is only for uh, uh, people that the so-called church. No, this is Jacob. <laughs> this is the Jacob, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So watch what it says. He showeth his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. Watch what it goes on to say. He has not dealt so with any nation. He didn't show that. That's why I know Jew is talking to the same people that had received these laws and statutes and this heritage, this faith that was once delivered unto them. That's who Jew talking to in the New Testament. And so the Bible said he has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. They don't know these judgments. That's why in this Hebrew Israelite awakening, we, we bring in the laws of God and statutes of God back. We bring in back the holy, the, the holy feast days and rejecting these, these religious holidays and these pagan holidays. And the, mo the church is going crazy because they love these holidays and these pagan days more than they love the feast days in the scripture. They'll tell us to throw them away, but yet they want to hold on to the to this these pagan holidays and all these pagan rituals that they bring into the churches. No, but the Hebrew Israelites are waking and up, waking up and bringing this thing back on course. Why? Because it was given to them. It was not given to the churches. It was not given to uh, other nations. That's what the scripture said. I'm going to read it again. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He has not so, so he, I'm sorry, he has not dealt so with any nation. Sorry, he, had, he didn't do it with any nation. And as for his judgment, 
they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Let me read another one. I like this one here, Amos 3, verse 2. It says, you only have I known, talking to the house of Israel, of all the families of the earth, therefore will I punish you for your iniquity. Israel has been punished. We done went through uh, all kinds of stuff. We've been scattered and still scattered. We're still in these nations, but yet they still hate us. They still give us by name. They still call us crazy when we say we're the people of the book. They still haven't uh, made things right and paid the reparation. They think we off the rocker when in reality they off the rocker. <laughs> you know why? Because this stuff was given to Israel. So, uh, and a lot of people on that day going to come up to the Most High, when he said it's thrown up and they're going to say, we've done great, wonderful, mighty things in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because Israel only have I known. And if you're going to know me, you're going to know me through this kingdom and through this way and through my people. Amen. There's, he still got peoples out here that's able to teach and to preach and to uh, uh, be an example of what they teach and preach. And he had them on the day of Pentecost. Those was Israelites. Glory to God that started that thing. And it's going to be Israelite, Hebrew Israelites that end this thing. Glory to God. Okay, well, let me read something else and then I'm going to move on. Um, let me see, can I find it? Uh, it's right here in Isaiah 63, verse 18 and verse 19. Now watch this. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. And he's talking about the Israelites. If you read all this in context, you know, he gave them the land and they possessed the land and the promises for a little while, but the ancestors broke the commandments and they was eventually put out of the land. They went, they were scattered and many of them was killed in 70 AD. The temple was destroyed by the Romans and later on they was taken into slavery all over the world. And James 1 verse 1 said, the 12 tribes scattered abroad and they still scattered. They will be scattered till Christ come in the sky and gather his elect. According to James 5 verse 7 and verse 8, because the Bible says, that to be patient, he's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel that scattered. But then in James chapter five, verse seven and eight, he said, be patient, brethren, to the coming of the Lord. Amen. Because he's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth when he gathered his elect. That's what he's talking about. So my point here is that Isaiah said, he said, the people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down our sanctuary. We know that happened in 70 AD when the adversaries came in. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 24, that uh, Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles uh, come to an end. So it's Gentiles over there got that land. It's not Israelites. I'm not saying one or two may not be living there, but I'm saying the ones controlling it. The one dictating, the one trotting down their land, the Bible said they Gentile. Those are not Israelites. So you can, the people can believe that if they want to, but the scripture don't agree with you. So it says the people of thy holiness have possessed it, but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down the sanctuary. We know they did. Now watch this. Uh, Isaiah 63 verse 19. We are thine. The Israelite belong to the most high. We are thine. Thou has never bared the rule over them. The one that took down the sanctuary, the one that set themselves up to be the Jews. The Bible says, I know the blasphemy of them that say they Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. They, they tore down the temple. They took over the land. But watch what he said. We are thine. The Israelites are his. Thou bearest not rule over them. They were not called by thy name. <laughs> so it goes back to what he says in Psalms uh, 147, verse 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. Then it says he has not dealt so with any nation. Now, I don't know how they're going to deal with the Bible, but deal with it. You've got to accept the scriptures are true, Old and New Testament, and they all match. There is no New Testament church that replaced Israel. Impossible. It's Israel, glory to God, and everyone else engrafted in among us and with, with us, Romans 11, verse 17. And if you're not among us and with us, you're not in this kingdom, because this is a Hebrew Israelite kingdom that's coming. And he's waking us up because he's getting us ready to be pillows in the house of the kingdom. Glory to God. Okay, let me go to the next thing here. All right, I made a, I'm dealing with my statements here, and I'm going to try to hurry up through this. All right, number one again. In this lesson, I want to show that it was the Hebrew Israelite that was called the saints. That's who Jude was talking about when he said 
the faith that was once delivered to the saints. He was talking about the Hebrew Israelites because the father didn't show this to no other nation. So, all right, now let me read Exodus 19 verse uh, five. It says, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above. See, a lot of these people don't like this, these Berean channels, and I don't bite my tongue calling these names because they're always trying to down the Hebrew Israelite movement. So uh, I'm just telling them that they need to repent because they, they seal in their doom by talking against us. But you got these people, uh, they don't like the fact that Israel is a special people. And the Bible said there, God put them above all people. But the reason they came low is because of breaking the covenant. But here's what the scripture says again. So whether people like it or not, here's what the scripture say. And we can't bite our tongue when the scriptures speak clear on something. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice, talking to Israel, uh, indeed, and keep my covenant, uh, because the covenant was given to them, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Everybody in the earth belonged to him, but out of the earth he chose a people. Now, if that's his plan to choose a people and through that people reach every other people, then that's his business. Glory to God. You, we can't tell the father how to run his kingdom, but there's some ministers out here who would like to do that. Look at Psalms 50 verse five. It says, gather my saints. He's talking about the Israelites. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That was the Hebrew Israelites. He told Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may come to the mountain and sacrifice unto me and serve me. These are the people that made a sacrifice and made a covenant with the almighty God when the faith was delivered unto him and the heritage, which is the faith and the heritage, all that really is the same in his laws, statutes and judgment, all that's really the same. So they, they came to that mountain and the faith was delivered unto them. Glory to God. And so he's talking about the same people, the Hebrew Israelites. So if you don't like this Hebrew Israelite awakening due to some of the things that may turn you off. Well, you, maybe you don't want this kingdom because some of the things that are turning you off now, father got that in his control. And he said, I'm going to plead with my people face to face. When I, when I bring them into the wilderness, I'm going to plead with them face to face. I'm going to uh, purge the rebels from among them. And then in, Re in uh, uh, Romans chapter 11, he said, this is my covenant unto them, the Hebrew Israelite. Nobody else got this covenant. When I shall send a deliverer from Zion and turn away ungodliness from Jacob, glory to God. And he said, this is the covenant I got with them. So we are his business. We are his uh, concern. And so the world shouldn't be worried about some ungodliness that you may see. And I'm not endorsing ungodliness. That's not what I'm doing because I don't believe in living ungodly. But I'm saying if you say you see something that's ungodly and it's turning you off. Well, the Bible said he's coming from Zion He's going to take away and turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So you can't wait till he get here to deal with his people before you start liking his people. Well, maybe you can't live with them. <laughs> That's just a fact. So he said, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That's the Hebrew Israelites. Uh, Psalms 148 verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, talking about Israel, the praise of all his saints even the children of Israel. The saints are the children of Israel. So when Jude said, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, he's talking about the Hebrew Israelites. Glory to God. Let me go to my next one. I got two more statements and then I'm going to try to close. Number two, also, if I'm sorry, also, it was the Hebrew Israelites that were given the charge to make disciples, to teach and to preach the gospel to 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 the nations of the world. Do you not know when Messiah uh, rose from the dead, he said, all power given unto me, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Do you know that was not Europeans he said that to? Now, I'm not trying to leave them out, but if they want to come in, they need to come in and humble themselves and not come in and colonize and take over and whitewash everything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it was not Europeans that he said that to. It was not Martin Luther that he said that to. It was not uh, Constantine, the Catholic Church, the Protestant churches, the denomination. He never started any denomination. Who was it? It was Israelites, Hebrew Israelites that he said that to. So I'm going to read that again. It says, 
Also, it was Hebrew Israelites that were given the charge to make disciples, to teach and to preach uh, the gospel to the uh, nations of the world. Now, let me read a few verses right fast because I don't want you to think I'm just saying something. So if anybody got an argument, I want you all to argue with these scriptures. Glory to God. Okay, Acts 1 verse 6, it says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, um, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now these are Hebrew Israelites standing there talking to a Hebrew Israelite savior, Yeshua, the Christ, the son of the living God. Some people know him as Jesus Christ. I believe uh, I believe in using both of the name. I have no problem with that. But we're talking about the same person, the same Hebrew Israelite savior. These Hebrew Israelite people sitting there asking them, will you at this time restore the kingdom? He said, it's not for you to know. Let me just finish. Which means he got a set time to, to, restore, uh, to restore the kingdom to Israel. When he come in the sky, bring his angels, gather his elect, he gonna set his kingdom up and then he gonna judge the nations of the world. Billions of people on his right hand, billions on his left hand, and some of them gonna go to hell and some of them gonna come into the kingdom after he set the kingdom up with the Hebrew Israelites. Now, if somebody don't like that, like I said, maybe you ain't ready to live in the kingdom, you just think you ready. So it says, uh, will you... Uh, Restore the kingdom to Israel, to Israel, not to the denomination, to Israel. Now watch the next verse, Acts 1, verse 7 and 8. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times and the season which the father has put in his own power. So he got a time and a season to set up this Hebrew Israelite kingdom. And in Revelation uh, that I read to you a while ago, he says 12 gates to the city, 12 angels guarding the city. And the city is structured around the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Don't get no better than this. Now, the churches didn't teach us this. The Eurocentric Christianity didn't teach us this. But now that in this great awakening and some of the Hebrews are waking up and they're coming back teaching these nuggets and we're bringing the truth back to light. This is a Hebrew Israelite kingdom. So if you hate Hebrew Israelites, maybe you're being tested and you fell in the test because of your mouth and your heart. And you really hate God's people. And you got another people you done replaced with them. Glory to God. You claim you don't believe in replacement theology, but all your loyalty is to a people that you ain't never said nothing negative about. And you sent them billions of dollars every year, especially to this nation. But yet you say you don't believe in replacement theology. Yes, you do. Because you support a people that don't fit the scripture. Glory to God and killing the real Israelites at the same time. So he got it in his plan to build this kingdom. So he said, which the father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So what did I say in my second statement? Also, it was the Hebrew Israelite that were given the charge to make disciples, to teach and to preach the gospel uh, to the nations of the world, okay? Now, let me jump down uh, to my last one. I have some more things I would like to say, but I don't want to keep going. But let me jump down to my last one, my last statement. When the Gentiles and others came in and started to teach these holy scriptures without the insight of the Hebrew Israelites, then the Holy Scriptures got perverted and whitewashed. I'm going to say that again. This is why we got such a mess right now. Christianity, you're, and, I, and when I say Christian, I'm a follower of Christ. I, I follow Christ. I believe in him. I believe scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Um, and I believe uh, being a follower of Christ uh and the way, as stated throughout the scripture, Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. That's what I follow. I do not follow Western Eurocentric Christianity. In fact, I rejected and renounced it some time ago. Glory to God, because it's nothing but white supremacy that whitewashed this, these scriptures. And so my third statement is when the Gentiles, and when I said Gentiles, I'm talking about the Isles of the Gentiles according to Genesis chapter 10, verse two through five, because we believe that Japheth 
is the progenitor of the European people. Most of the Europeans already know that. And they are the ones that are that that God allowed to come in because he said I was going to use another nation to make you jealous. Talking about the Hebrews because the Hebrews broke the covenant. So he used another nation, a foolish nation who was no people. Uh, and, and talking about the Isles of the Gentiles. And he used them. And through using them, it made the Hebrews jealous. Glory to God. The Father said, you made me jealous, so I'm going to make you jealous. Now, that's just the way he is. He said, I'm a jealous God. He said his name is jealous. So we should have known that, or our ancestors should have known that. So when the Gentiles, or the Isles of the Gentiles, and others came in, came, um, came in and started to teach, now they started to teach this document, glory to God, and started to teach these holy scriptures without the insight of the Hebrew Israelite. In fact, they, that's why the churches, when the, when the Antioch church sprung off from, from Antioch and started moving to Rome and Constantine got involved, the first pope got involved, and these people started teaching the scripture, they was the one killed the Hebrew Israelites. And the persecution that came on the church, not only but, well, Paul was persecuting them at first because he didn't understand this gospel, but then later on, Paul understood it and got on board. But the main persecution and the main uh, lynching or uh, uh, martyrdom came from the Europeans, the Gentiles that came in, took it over and just just kind of blotted out the Hebrews. So the Hebrews went under persecution because of all the others that came in and usurped authority. Simple study of history can prove that. Glory to God. So when the Gentiles and others came in and started to teach these holy scriptures without the insight of the Hebrew Israelites, then the Holy Scriptures got perverted and was whitewashed. Okay, now just as, as I said a while ago, just a simple uh, study of true church history as to how we got uh, to where we are today will explain how everything got messed up. Christianity got over thirty-two thousand different Christian denominations, Islam, uh, all the all religions. God never thought of the religion. He gave a people a heritage. He said he commanded a law unto Moses, even the heritage that he gave us. Father never started some denomination or some church, amen, apart from the house of Israel. That's just a fact, okay? Now, um, let me see. I think I'm just about done. Let me close right here. Hallelujah. Let me close right here. I want to go back to my text. And I'm, I was teaching on contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Jude was telling the saints who were the Hebrew Israelites, contend for this faith. Stand firm for this faith. Put your life on the line for this faith. Even unto death. Glory to God. So I lost, you know, churches, uh, big churches, nice churches. And I was even asked to uh, go on church salary to keep a big, nice church here in this city. But I disagree with some of the stuff that was being taught and some of the stuff that I saw. And I rejected that because I'm not going to be put in a box and given some kind of check and be in some kind of little click just to get along with everybody and not contend for the faith. So I'm so serious about the faith. I put my life on the line for it and I, and I put my livelihood on the line for it. it. That stuff don't matter to me. Why? Because especially after I woke up, because I realized I'm charged to contend for the faith. It doesn't matter who believe me or who hate me or who love me or like me. I'm charged to contend for the faith. And I'm saying this to every other Hebrew Israelite, especially in this awakening, you too are charged with these valuable truths that was once delivered unto our ancestors. So this is what Jude is talking about. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and call mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you to exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Uh, that was once delivered unto the saints. That's what was given to the Hebrew Israelites. And now that we woke, let's stand firm. It doesn't matter how many channels out there 
dislike us. Who cares? Glory to God. We'll love you. We'll love of your soul. We're going to pray for you, but we're going to confront you in love when we have to. That's why sometimes I'll call names because they call our names. Paul called names. It's calling names throughout the scripture. A lot of people never misun never understood me on that. But I understand some things about these scriptures that I'm not willing to compromise when the Most High tell me to do something about some of this stuff out here. So we Hebrew Israelites been charged with this gospel. We are the ones been charged to teach and to preach and to carry it to the world. Uh, do we stop others from coming in and helping to support them? No. But I'm saying we're the ones that got the charge. We was given the charge and he said he didn't deal with any other nation. He dealt with us. And so it's our responsibility to bring this thing back on course, to confront lies when we have to, uh, to set the record straight. Now, we can't set the record straight if we if we are not straight. So we have to be living right, talking right, walking right. Amen. And if we do, the most high y'all will back us up. So in closing, I want to read. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 down to verse 5, because we've been charged. Hebrew Israelite, this Hebrew Israelite awakening, we've been charged with this. And so we have to contend. We can't let what they say anger us or make us mad or act out of character. No, stand your ground and let the Father fight your battle. Watch what he said, 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 down to verse 5. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He coming in the sky with his angels to gather the elect. And when he get here, he going to judge the elect first. The Bible said that the gospel is to the Jew first and then to the Greek, but it also said the judgment is to the Jew first and then to the Greek. In other words, the Israelites are judged first. We're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we're going to be judged of our faithfulness and I will stand for the truth and the gospel. And we're also going to be judged for our lives and our character because we're supposed to be a light to the nation. The Bible said in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. It's not a good work to cuss everybody out and want to fight everybody and, and uh, act out of care. That's not a good work. That don't glorify the Father. And like I said, I understand those that have issues. Father got a plan for them. And so I'm praying, but we need to be a light. We need to show people the, that you can walk righteous and holy and, and sinless in this thing. It's a shame most people don't feel you can live a sinless life. That's a whole nother message. But it says, I charge thee before, uh, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. When he come to set up this Israelite kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season. That's what I'm doing now. Out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt. People don't like this part of the gospel, but this is a part of perfecting the saints. What? Reprove, rebuke, exalt. With all long suffering and doctrine, teach it and show, show the example. Let your life be an example, but also teach it and show the example in the scripture. Make it plain. Then it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that's for some Israelites too. That's some Israelites still stiff neck and won't let, won't be uh, corrected, you know, so we go first, amen, but then there's a lot in the churches and in Christendom, they surely don't want no correction, but this Bible, Bible said the word of God uh, is for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, and so when you thoroughly furnished unto all good works, then uh, we can let our light so shine that men may see our good works and glorify the Father. I want my life to glorify the Father. When he come, I want to hear him say, well done. That's why I live right uh, in his power and in his strength. Let me finish. It says, uh, uh, verse uh, three, it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction. Don't worry about being afflicted, people hating you going through. Uh, Israel, Israel has always been a suffering people, so we can handle it. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Israelite, in this awakening, let's make full proof of who we are by the character of Christ that we 
act out and live. Glory to God. This is a great awakening. Uh, as I said, I make no apologies for being a part of it. And I'm glad the Most High didn't leave me out. Glory to God. This is Apostle Lewis. And I thank the Most High for those of you that was able to uh, stay with me. And I got, I see so many people on both sides. I don't want to get to call a name, but uh, I see some of you are so faithful. Y'all always tune in. So I thank the Most High for you. And I appreciate whenever you leave comments where I can converse back and forth with you. Because like I said, when I'm teaching, I'm kind of old school. So I get distracted if I keep, you know, going to the chat. I wish I could do it like some of the other brothers, but I am who I am by the grace of God. But anyway, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I want to encourage you, please share. If you was blessed by something that was said and you think it'll bless somebody else, please take some time and share. Hit the thumbs up button. And those of you on, on YouTube, uh, Facebook, that haven't went to YouTube and subscribe, please do so. Go to YouTube under Apostle Curtis Lewis, but you have to spell Lewis, L-O-U-I-S, to pull up my name. And so pull it up on YouTube and hit the subscribe button and the notification button and tell your friends, your neighbors, and, and help us to spread this gospel. Glory to God. So I want to thank everyone again for this opportunity. And we love all of you and thank God for this great awakening. And I thank God for my Hebrew brothers and sisters. And even those in Christendom, I believe that God got his people everywhere. Those of you that's still in the Eurocentric Christian churches and the evangelical churches, Bible said, come out of her, my people. I promise you, a lot of that stuff is perverted. And um, and if you stay there, you show sure need to be a light and you show sure need to tell the people the truth. Glory to God. But anyway, we love all of you, uh, uh, those in Christendom and those in the Hebrew Israelite family. This is a great awakening. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be blocked. And if you hate it, maybe you hate the kingdom that's coming. Glory to God, because it's going to be a Hebrew Israelite kingdom. This is Apostle Lewis saying we love you. Thank God for you. Remember, someone cares for you. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. We'll see you on the next YouTube and Facebook live. Peace. Hallelujah to everyone.